What up peeps? Welcome to the Gabe Fix. Whether it's your first time or you've been here multiple times before. Hey girl, hey. All right, let's get into it. I am so behind on doing my mommy makeover updates. Like, so behind. I haven't talked to y'all since I was, what, eight weeks? Uh, two to three months post? I'm eight months post now. <laughs> All the time has passed okay and I kept saying oh I need to make another update I need to make another update and I never did but I'm here now so let's get into it I am gonna just kind of tell you how I'm feeling about certain things and then I have questions from my Instagram subscribers so I'm gonna go through and answer those questions it's really like just a handful of them so how am I feeling uh, I feel like that is a question that I got and most people they ask me like how do I feel how do I feel honestly at this point I feel I feel good I feel normal and I think that the last time I made the video at eight weeks I felt pretty normal like I don't have any pain I don't have any issues with my incisions or my scars like things are healing up great uh, I feel good I'm back to normal I'm lifting you know I'm doing uh, you know a little bit of cardio here and there I have run you know I went through a period like a month or two ago where I was trying to run again it didn't give me any issues uh, there was no pain or anything there I'm able to do push-ups my core feels good like that was a test for me because I'm pretty I'm pretty used to doing push-ups and like strength training and things but I could like it was harder I could tell like with my core it just it just didn't feel right so I could only do like maybe two or three and then I have to like get on my knees and do the rest of them well I'm back to doing like at least 10 on my toes which feels good to me so I feel like my core is is getting back to where it was and it may be even a little bit stronger now because I had the um the muscle repair there so I I feel good overall I feel good now here's what everyone else wants to know. Let me back up. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I, I decided to film this video at the most inopportune time because I really should be packing because I'm going out of town in the morning. But I was like, no, I gotta get this done. I gotta get this done. Um, so let's see. The past five or so months have been interesting. And I say that because I would say around month four or five, I went through this period where I was just bloated all the time. Like literally, it, it, I don't even think that it was so much as swelling and it could have been partly swelling, partly bloating, but I just felt, I just felt bloated. Like I looked pregnant and it was weird because I was like, what is going on? Like as soon as I would eat anything, I could see it, you know? And at that, I did realize that I was, probably not following you know my calorie deficit I was eating a lot more out uh, we were traveling so lots of sodium lots of you know all of that stuff and I could definitely tell a difference that is one thing that I will say since having this surgery I can definitely tell a difference when something affects me differently like food wise as soon as I eat it I'm either going to bloat or I'm not <laughs> so I have to be mindful of that because you know, if I'm out or, you know, I'm trying to be cute, looking snatched, I got to be mindful of that because one too many drinks, one too many salty, sodium-filled foods, and your girl is looking like she's three, four months pregnant. So I really have to be mindful of that. I also went through a period where I just stopped wearing my faja. Like, period, point blank, I was over it. I felt like I wore it for so long consistently that I was just done. I probably went a good three, four months before I was like, you know what? I don't think I'm gonna do this anymore. So I just stopped. I just stopped wearing it. I was only wearing it at night and then I got tired of it. Like I'm normally a person that doesn't like to sleep in pajamas. I don't like to sleep in anything. So I was like, I wanna go back to that. What does that feel like? So I stopped wearing it. And I would say that between probably June and now, I've probably worn my faja maybe like 10 times, <laughs> like throughout the course of these last three weeks, or I mean three months. 
I've probably worn it like 10 times because I just I just got tired of it and also I feel like the Faja is great and there are people that swear by them and they feel like to maintain your results you're gonna have to be in this Faja for the rest of your life and I'm not about that I'm not interested I want to know what my body is going to look like without me wearing a Faja from day to day so that actually brings me to the first question it was like do you see a difference in your results when you wore the Faja versus when you stopped uh, and yes, I absolutely saw the difference in what I looked like. And that was tough for me. I have to be honest, like, I was like, why do I feel wider? You know, like, what is going on? Am I gaining weight? Like, what is it? You know, and I had to remind myself that I'm not constantly binding myself. So I mean, at the end of the day, some people believe that waist trainers, they work and Fajas, they work. But honestly, like if you're not in the calorie deficit to lose the fat in the first place, it's only going to work temporarily. And when you stop wearing it, you're going to go back to what your body is supposed to do. So I definitely saw the difference. But it's kind of one of those things where if I want to keep the snatched super tight super smooth little beady waist because my faja is also altered so you have to think about it I had my faja taken in in the you know in the torso area like two inches or an inch and a half on each side so it is designed to do me like this you know what I'm saying and it's just not realistic for me you know what you want to do uh but there was a difference. I did notice that I was a little bit wider, but it wasn't like, oh my God, like girl. I mean, I think that when I'm wearing my Faja and on top of it, like I'm super snatched. Waist is super small, which is great, but I'm okay with my waist just being smaller. <laughs> like it don't have to be super snatched. It's okay. Um, I did also feel like from wearing the backboard that I was wearing, I don't know but I feel like I have developed extra row like back rows like I they're they're more prominent to me which is weird because I had back lapo back lapo back lipo but I feel like I don't know I just feel like there was a period where I said I was kind of like wilding out I was eating a lot I was eating out a lot maybe I did gain a couple a couple of pounds or so but I do feel like it showed up in my back if that makes sense so you know that's nothing that I can't get rid of with you know staying on on top of my macros and continuing to strength train but uh yeah I will notice I did notice that the smoothness wasn't quite there when I was wearing my faja and my belly board versus not wearing it also I have a little pooch at the bottom here I think it's a pooch some people look at me and I was like, girl, your stomach is flat. To me, it's not flat, flat. Like, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. And I will show you guys, you know, I have footage that I took the other day, like, you know, in my underwear so you can see it. But maybe I can show you here. So, like, you see, like, it, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to, to show what I'm talking about. But to me that's not flat like if i had on a bodycon dress i'm trying to figure out the best way to show y'all this if i had on a bodycon dress you would still see this little like do you see that and maybe it's just me but it's not completely like to me flat would be like a board and it's not flat like a board it's like just a little bit of a pooch there and I don't know if it'll ever go away. I have just resolved to not worry about it because it was really, really bothering me probably about a month and a half ago. I was just like, why is this not flat enough? I paid a lot of money. It needs to be flat as a board. And you know, a lot of people say that you have to go back and get lipo because when they do the tummy tuck, because the tummy tuck is so invasive in that stomach area, they don't lipo as well. So it could just be additional fat that I had already that they didn't get because they didn't get to lipo that. So my goal is to just try and lower my body fat percentage so that I can get rid of you know let me see if that happens to go away before I am like oh I need to lipo this you know which is another question that I've had actually would you go back in 
to get the area you're unhappy with lipoed or a tummy tuck revision because I was telling the I was sharing this with my subscribers I might actually play that clip so you can see me in my underwear that day where I was talking about the little pouch there and it changes depending on like what phase of my cycle I'm in so like I just ended my cycle a couple days ago and I feel like I'm usually my flattest that first week off of my cycle and then after that like it just starts to show up more and I think that that's just natural all women look different depending on what stage of your cycle you're in uh, because sometimes there's bloat and sometimes there's not um, so yeah here's the thing about going back under it's not necessarily my first choice. I'm not saying I would never go back under the knife, but I could probably say right now, I'm 90% sure that it's a no for me. Like I just, I love my results enough to be happy with the change, you know? And one thing I have definitely realized since having the surgery, I now understand how people get multiple surgeries like it's like never enough because you you almost start to chase perfection and you're picking out every little flaw and then you have to remind yourself it's like i'm not i'm not a barbie like i'm not supposed to look like this perfect human being with the super flattest tummy and the the slimmest thighs and you know whatever it is insert whatever issue you have with your body but it's a very slippery slope where you can get caught up in body dysmorphia like I feel like I have noticed that where I'm looking at myself and not feeling pleased when I know that I look so much better like I can see the difference but sometimes I don't see the difference when I'm looking at myself, if that makes sense, because I'm focused on, well, it's not flat enough, or there's still a little pooch there, or man, uh, even like, man, I should have got implants because I don't really have, you know, like that super full round at the top implant look. I don't have that because I didn't get implants, but I have definitely thought about it. Like, hmm, do I want to go back and get some implants? Like, and then it's like, girl, really? Like, is it really that crucial and I'm not knocking anybody who has multiple surgeries and I'm not saying I will never go back in if I can't get rid of this back fat with a good old calorie deficit and some some you know strength training then I just might go back and say can you please because it's like it seems like it's harder for me to get rid of it even though I'm doing you know the same things that I was doing but like yeah never say never but right now, I'm about 90% sure that I just don't want to go through it again. I, to be quite honest, I don't want to go through the recovery again. I don't want to be in pain. I don't want to have to go through wearing a faha all over again. Like, my body looks great. It looks phenomenal. I got well worth the money that I paid for it. It's great. It's almost like, is it really necessary? Like, who why like what is the reason I guess would be my answer like do you really need to go back like you could lose about 10 15 more pounds and get slimmer uh which brings me to another point um I was gonna make this video about like the 10 things that I wish I knew or like the five things that I wish I knew and I might do that just to put that like in its own separate video but I do sometimes wish that I would have waited and lost maybe another 10 15 pounds before i did it because i was happy with where i was like i had i wasn't at like the goal goal weight that i was when i lost the weight right after like having rake and i was like the lean just lean like strictly just like muscle and I had gained weight from that and I wasn't necessarily like unhappy I was like oh this is cool we'll just you know do a little nip and tuck and it'll fix it and it didn't fix it so this is probably why I'm experiencing back fat because I have you know some body fat that I could stand to shed so I do kind of wish that I would have waited and gotten all of the weight off that I wanted to get off all of you know get down to the body fat percentage I was comfortable in before doing anything and it's not like it's with like it's stopping me from doing that because I can still do that like I still have the goal to lose like 10 15 pounds but maybe I would be happier with my results had I done that 
beforehand because also you know when you lose fat you lose fat everywhere so it comes off of your arms the weight comes off of your back it comes off of your thighs and things like that but when you get a tummy tuck you know they like make your tummy perfect pretty much but you still have that extra layer of fat over your arms or in your back or you know what I'm saying and I think that mine doesn't look like horrible but I definitely feel bigger up top than what my you know torso area looks like obviously I mean because I had a tummy tuck <laughs> you know what I'm saying but I didn't have anything done to my arms it's not like I had them get rid of the fat or lipo my arms or you know do that what is a brachio thing where they like get rid of the loose skin so I still have loose skin because I have fat loss that I need to work on and you know there's an extra layer of fat over the muscles that I have because I have pretty toned arms like my arms are when the fat is gone they they nice <laughs> I just gotta work on getting back to that so I would have to say if that was if I had a regret that would be my only regret is that I probably I didn't I, didn't, I wasn't even trying to really lose weight before I had the surgery. I was like, oh, I feel pretty comfortable. I think this is going to take me exactly where I need to be. And it didn't. And that's okay. But I feel like I can get there with the loss of, you know, maybe like 10 pounds or so. And I'm not really even concerned with losing the pounds per se, but the fat loss, um, shedding that body fat. That was a very long answer to would I ever go under the knife again? And I'm just gonna say never say never. But right now, about 90% no. Did your nipple sensation come back? <laughs> Somebody said I asked a while back and uh, I said I would ask again later. <laughs> Cause I don't remember if they came back when she asked the last time. One of my nipples is back to normal. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the other one is still, is still out. It's still the jury is still out on the other nipple and it's annoying it's it's one of those things where it's like the look of the draw I mean it's a side effect you don't know whether it's going to affect your sensation or not and mine just happened to be affected but I've talked to so many women who have had breast reductions or breast lifts before and some people have said that their nipples took years to get back any sensation so that I still have hope that the other one is gone get his life together soon but I am grateful that I have the one she's very very much appreciated okay <laughs> speaking of the boobs and nipples and such I do feel like they have dropped a bit and I knew that that was gonna happen but I feel like I was just I just loved the way they look when they were all like swollen because they kind of looked like an implant now they don't look like implants at all they still look phenomenal don't get it twisted I love the way my breasts look because they were like sagging 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 like sag city and I think just having the nipple placement be higher versus at the end of them if that makes sense like you know when your nipples are pointing down versus pointing out it makes a huge difference so even though it's not like a an implant circle it's you know it's like a drop like a teardrop like a natural boob it looks very very natural I love that it looks natural but also when you think of getting your boobs done you think of that like artificial like cleavage that's just there all the time and I don't have that but I also didn't want implants so you know it's just little things that I do kind of think about like oh well maybe I should have maybe I should have gotten them you know I don't I don't know whatever I I love my boobs <laughs> and I ain't got no complaints either somebody said no question but you look really great I think a year from now you'll see it I would trade with you thank you I really appreciate that and that's the key when I have those moments of body dysmorphia it's like I have to pull out the before picture and say oh no there's a clear difference I I looked great then but there was definitely a difference that I can see like sometimes I just have to remind myself that and then also like just a reminder to everybody like there's always going to be someone who is looking at you and and you're their goal you know um like we have all these body goals and whatever goals and people that we look to but we have to remember that there are people who look to us and we're their goal um so thank you i really appreciate that next question what clothing size were you before your surgery and what is your clothing size now i'm trying to think like i was probably in a solid 810 and now i can fit some some sixes 
but mostly like just an eight. Um, depending on the fit of it, there are sometimes I go up to a 10 just to fit my thighs, but then there's gapping in the waist. So I guess I'm between, you know, the same sizes, honestly. Like I'm not out here buying fours or anything like that because I got, I mean, I got hips and thighs and, and butt now. Like my butt is shaped differently i don't know if it's sitting higher or what but like literally i have this frustration with buying clothes because nothing fits right um and i can i can just only imagine if i would have gotten a bbl like how much more frustrated i would have been because it is so annoying to put on a pair of jeans and you have this huge gap in the back. I told y'all, I am not about that life. I've never been about that life. I know it's normal for a lot of y'all, but it has never been normal for me. And I'm annoyed with it because I don't particularly like belts. So now I'm like, I gotta get all these jeans altered. I have to buy a size larger to account for my big thighs, but my the waist is gapping. So the size didn't necessarily change as much. It's just the way it feels fit if that makes sense um so yeah i'm i'm a solid eight is what i would say i'm a solid eight sometimes i can wear a six sometimes i need a 10 depending on what it fits like like if especially if you're talking jeans i feel like jeans are just made smaller regardless but some things are just you know like i could get away with probably a six in a dress or you know like a skirt or something like that that you know, it doesn't matter what my legs are doing or maybe even like shorts. I think I have a pair of six sixes that are shorts. Uh, but when it's like a pant, I definitely need the bigger size. So hopefully that makes sense. You look great. Any, reg any regrets? Um, I talked about that already. Um, oh, okay. I just remembered another thing that I... I don't know if it's necessarily a regret, but if I went back and did it again, I may have told him to leave my thighs alone. Uh, because I had, so I had lipo to the inner and outer thighs. And I don't know, I just feel like my thighs are not as smooth as they were. I don't, I don't know, I feel like it created more dimples in my thighs than what I had before, particularly like behind on the back of my thighs you know like kind of up like around the hip area not the hip area but right up under like my butt um i just feel like there are there are more thighs there than i had before and i bought this some kind of weird contraption thing it's called a fascia blaster it's like supposed to help with cellulite so my plan is to start using that I ain't started using it yet, but I'm going to use it. So if anybody has seen that and knows if it works, let me know. But yeah, I do feel like the lipo in my thighs gave me more dimples than anything. And I'm not sure that I really tell that they're any slimmer, if that makes sense. Like I've always had thick thighs. So I don't feel like they're much smaller than they were. So I don't know that it was necessary worth, necessarily worth it for him to lipo my thighs because they don't seem significantly smaller, if that makes sense. So yeah, I guess, it, I guess you know, you can call them regrets, but they're not necessarily regrets. They're just like things that I think about. Like, hmm, well, I probably would have done that differently. Or maybe I would have done that instead. I don't know. How long did the doctor say you would until you would be at a full recovery or the final results and he has always told me from jump to give it a full year a full year for the swelling to completely stop a full year to see like where everything settles and what my body is going to be looking like he's always said a full year so i'm not quite there yet i still got about four more months so i am very excited to see like you know what my body is looking like in December I have revved up my working out and you know I've gotten a little bit more strict with my calorie deficit so I am planning to shed those 10 to 15 pounds you know at least 10 of them by the end of the year that's the goal uh so um yeah I'm excited to see what it looks like and like every time I talk to him he's like just you know you're not you're not done healing yet so just keep that in mind your body is going to change for that whole year speaking of my surgeon someone asked do i have a follow-up appointment with him yes i do have a follow-up appointment with him i don't even remember when my next one is like it's been like every couple months 
or so so i think my next one might be in like november october or november but i am potentially going to texas uh for something else and i'm going to be in the area so i may just call and schedule one for while i'm there uh because i'm going to be there so i can actually like go in and see him um there is a little area of concern that i have and i'll talk about that like you'll see that when i show you guys what i'm looking like uh where i feel like i could have a dog ear he says it's not necessarily a dog ear. He, I don't, I don't know how he explained it to me. And he said that, of course, I could always go in and get a revision. Now, I will say, if there's something he can do to fix this, that might make me go back under the knife because it's a little annoying to me. It's like the way my incision is on one side, it gives me a little bit of a love handle versus the other side where it's a smooth you know from skin to incision to skin it's smooth and on the other side it's like a just a little like ripple there and it's it's annoying it bothers me um i can get around it i can mask it like most people wouldn't notice it um and i also i also wear shapewear i still wear shapewear when i'm wearing anything bodycon or anything fitted because i just feel like shapewear gives everybody a smooth finish <laughs> like you know it gets everything the cellulite and all the things so like when I put on my shapewear you'd never be able to see it but like if I'm wearing a bikini or if I'm wearing a thong like sometimes it can get it can just sit right in that little like dimple or like ripple there and could look like a little love handle so that is very annoying he told me to give it a year and see what it looks like once i get closer to a year and then if we want to talk revisions then we can talk revisions but quite honestly i don't think he does any free revisions so i feel like i would have to pay for you know uh, all of that all over again like the surgical fees and all of that stuff and then if I do all of that then it's like you might as well lipo this back so I don't know I, I don't know how much it bothers me if it bothers me that much um but I will actually show you that um now I feel like I covered everything that's everything that I can think of off top and um now I'm going to show you what my body is looking like so I just wanted to show you what I was looking like because I felt slim this morning when I woke up. Um, Babe said he could see some average happening. I don't know if you can see some average happening. So I'll zoom in so you can see that my belly button definitely looks different than it did in the last update. Um, it's more round. It's not so like, you know, like a slit. It's more round. Let me show you up close of my scar. Um, I've been slacking on my scar cream and things. Um, I do have a silicone gel that I put on there and I also bought some oil. I do feel like it will probably eventually maybe lighten up here some, um, but I'm not super worried about it. The silicone gel that I have been using as of late, I also bought this Bermuda dark spot oil that came with this dark spot like exfoliant situation I can't really vouch for how much this is working eh, I don't know I probably put this on like two to three times a week and then all the other days I'm using the silicone gel this is me eight months So I do have an area of concern and it is this little part right here. I think that there is a bit more puckering on this side. So I was talking to my surgeon about it and he was like, oh, you can always get a revision. And I'm like, but is it supposed to look like this, sir? Um, I feel like it's a dog ear. He says it's not a dog ear, but it's like, I don't even know if you can see it either, but it's like smooth right here and there's a, a slight indention right here. I hope, I hope y'all can see what I'm trying to say there. It's just a slight like little bit of something here that I don't have right here. Maybe you can see the difference. So 
if I'm quite honest, it does bother me because I do want to be symmetrical <laughs> in my waist. And it's like sometimes like if I'm wearing a thong or something, it'll get caught in this little thing right here. It's almost like a little permanent love handle and I don't like it. So I'm going to continue to talk to him about that. Obviously, I could get it lipoed, but I just don't... I, I don't know how I feel about going back under the knife. I don't know. Um, my camera is getting ready to die. I will also say that I feel like my boots have dropped some. Um, like if I look at the video when I was wearing this bra the last time in eight months, they were like sitting up a little bit more. So they have dropped. They, you know, they look natural. They look great. They don't bother me that they have dropped. I mean, I knew that was a possibility that, you know, it was going to happen at some point because I didn't get an implant but I still enjoy them lifted. They are way better than where they were. Um, so yeah, this is what my body is looking like at eight months post-op without really wearing a faja. Um, I do feel like I have an excessive amount of back fat. Like, I don't know if this is from the lipo, or what, but I just feel like it's really difficult for me to get rid of these little pockets of fat right here. So I'm still, you know, I'm in my calorie deficit. I've been kind of fooling around with my weight loss goals, <laughs> honestly, since surgery. And I just kind of got serious maybe like a month or two ago. So I feel like this should be gone hopefully by the end of the year. But I do feel like I gotta shed some body fat because my arms have a little bit more body fat and it's like I can see it because this is so much smaller. It like brings attention to this for me. Um, and maybe if somebody else is watching, they see it too, but I think I notice it the most because I feel like this is great. Like I'm snatched here, the booty is sitting nice, but all this like, you know, little extra fat layer that I have, like I can't see the muscle definition that I have in my arms as much right now. So my goal is just to continue to lower my body fat percentage so that I can shed some of this excess. All right, so I hope that you enjoyed the video. Hopefully I answered all of your questions. As always, if you have more questions, comments, concerns, feel free to leave them down below. I will come back. I promise I will come back and do another update. I don't know when it's probably going to be at one year i mean unless something drastic changes between now and a year i probably won't come back because it's not a whole lot for me to tell you about um but yeah thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye